Gooden. In the circle, it is Alyssa Denham for the Wildcats. Kenzie, what can fans expect to see out of her? Yeah, the senior getting the start. It is senior weekend. Good ERA for Denham this year, 1.69. And coming off a really solid weekend, even though Arizona didn't take the series on the road at Oregon, I thought the pitching for Arizona was a huge bright spot for Coach Candrea. And Denham's going to throw in the mid to high 60s. She really moves the ball around, has a ton of different speeds, but it's her drop ball that is her go-to. She's not a strikeout pitcher, but she gets she gets those ground balls. Well, and she's got a terrific defense behind her. Mike Candre in his 36th season as Wildcats head coach, the most wins in Division I softball history. Those eight national championships, you know he would love another. And there is Kelly Nue Perez, 15th season as Bruins head coach. And she is the reigning national champion head coach. And Aliyah Jordan quickly erased as the grounder is fielded easily by that Arizona defense. So with Jordan gone on the ground out, Brianna Perez steps in. Yeah, you don't often see a leadoff swinging at the first pitch, very rarely. Brianna is one of two players on the Bruins roster this season to start in and play every game. Delaney Wiz is the other. Bri is the shortstop. Bats left, throws right. Five foot seven inch red shirt junior from Martinez, California. She's got a team high 36 RBI. Big swing and a miss there. Mike Bartling is our home player. He uh, home plate umpire rather. He's got balls and strike. Eric Hawthorne at first base. Eddie Cooper at second, and at third is Scott Tomlinson. Perez showing bunt there. Corners crashing hard against Perez, showing her short game right here. This is a player who, as a slap hitter, if you will, triple threat. You saw her show bunt there. She's leading their team in home runs. So really hard to defend a player like Brie Perez. 11 home runs for her, but she is cut down quickly. Terrific play by Malia Martinez at third. And that's good news for the Arizona defense because Perez leads the team in steals. 12 of 13 in the stolen base department. Yeah, anytime you can erase Brie Perez, it is good news. And two early ground balls off the end of the bat against Alyssa Denham, that's her bread and butter. When she's rolling those ground balls like that, you know she's having her, her best stuff and her spins are right. So we get our first look at Rachel Garcia at the dish. Top slugging percentage on the team at 778. 383 batting average, and Denim is quickly ahead 0 and 2. Garcia, the 5 foot 6 inch redshirt senior from Palmdale, California, has won just about every award one can win playing Division I softball. She gives that one a ride, and that is gone. Garcia, yard. Garcia with her 10th home run of the season, and UCLA is out to a 1-0 lead. I mean, this is on an 0-2 pitch. Rachel Garcia, just so much respect for the player that she is. Look at where this pitch is. 0-2 pitch, yes, it's off the plate, but the problem, it's elevated. Watch Garcia's hand. She doesn't have to go down to get this pitch, just kind of stays up, throws her bat head. Is a little bit off speed, so you can see how she was far out in front, but it does not matter. She has some of the best power, if not the best power in the country in terms of hitting the ball hard and just her strength at the plate. That ball got out in a hurry. Let's say hello to Delaney Wiz for the first time tonight. Angle right here, you can see how far this ball travels. 
halfway up out there in Kendrea's corner. Just a quiet solo shot for, they call her the GOAT. <laughs> I loved how coach described her, quiet thunder. Yes, I think that was, that was it right there. Just seemed like a very quiet, here I am type of moment. Wiz is dangerous. She hit a pair of home runs in the series sweep of Stanford last weekend, going three for three with a homer and three RBI Sunday to complete that four game sweep of the Cardinal. She's ahead three and one. Wiz. And that is gone. Delaney Wiz with her 11th home run of the season. And it's 2-0 UCLA. What a start for UCLA. Statistically, when you look at them, they don't jump off the page in their home run numbers. But when we talked to Coach Kelly I this, this weekend, she said, you know, we're playing in Arizona and the ball flies down there. Back-to-back -back home runs, Delaney Wiz, she has had the tough job all season long of hitting behind Rachel Garcia. I love her swing, so simple. Very similar pitch and very similar spot in the, in the field where it was hit. An outside curveball pulled to the left side of the ballpark. Maya Brady. The redshirt freshman sensation has started all 36 games she's played in this season. Coming into tonight, 333 batting average. And that is gone! Back to back to back home runs for UCLA to take a 3 nothing lead. Home run number 10 for Brady. Wow. Lots of celebration in the UCLA dugout and a meeting in the circle as Alyssa Denham has got to be a little shook with all this thunder. And I was talking about the drop ball for Denham when she first started the game. All three home runs, the ball has been elevated. And how talented UCLA is. You cannot give them pitches over the plate that are up by their belt or even higher. And the Bruins are feeling it. Think about this. They went down quickly. Leah Jordan, quick, easy ground out. Bree Perez, quick, easy ground out. Then here comes Rachel Garcia. We know what she does. Mm -hmm. But Delaney Wiz and Maya Brady. My goodness. Anna Vines steps to the plate. We'd like to welcome everybody that was watching the UW victory. We have got a hot start for UCLA, number two in the country here at number eight, Arizona, alongside two-time All-American Kenzie Fowler. I am Cindy Brunson. And it is a trio of show low shots that have given the Bruins the lead. Thanks to Rachel Garcia getting this party started, Delaney Wiz, and then Maya Brady. And now at the dish is Anna Vines. She's rocking a six game hit streak, batting 571 during said streak with three RBI. So if Alyssa Denham wants a break here, it might not come from Vines. Vines over the head of Caranco, and she'll hold for the single. So that hit streak now seven games for Anna Vines, the five foot five inch red shirt sophomore out of Temecula, California. The hits just keep coming and now the bullpen is active. Hannah Bowen up and throwing. As we say hello to Alyssa Garcia with Vines on first and Garcia is hit by the pitch. So Vines is on second. 
and Alyssa Garcia is on first. Yeah, this is a really rare start for Alyssa Denham. She's a better pitcher than she's showing right now. Her ERA just over 1.5. Having a really good senior season. Primarily a drop ball pitcher. And for our viewers that missed the back to back to back solo home runs, the balls that Denham was offering were just up in the zone and the Bruins were all over it. Yeah, a couple to left and one to dead center. So now there are two aboard, one in scoring position for Kinsley Washington. Washington is the five foot eight inch redshirt junior. Lefty bat tied for a team high with 10 doubles on the season coming in. She does have a team high 27 strikeouts, so you know Denham would like to end this right here. And that's the pitch right there that she needs on that 0-2-1-2 count. Keeping it low by the knees. It was breaking away off the plate a little bit. Mike Bartling didn't think that was a strike. Some of the fans in the stands did not agree with Blue and are letting him hear about it. Anna Vines is in scoring position. Alyssa Garcia is on first. Big swing and a mount miss, and the count goes full. Denim going to a rise ball on that swing and miss. I'd love to see her go down with her bread and butter. She issues the walk, so the bags are full. Trouble continues for Denim and Kelly Gooden steps in. Gooden is the five foot six inch red shirt sophomore from Seal Beach, California. Has started all but one game this season and has hits in nine of her last 12 games, batting 481 with five stolen bases. Yeah, Gooden, typically a short gamer, likes to drag bunt, chop slap. Base is loaded. She pops that one in the air. Jesse Harper calling for it, and Mionio calls her off. If you like the long ball, this was the inning for you. I mean, UCLA coming out. The ball flies in the state of Arizona. Rachel Garcia, Delaney Wiz, and oh yeah, the super freshman, Maya Brady for the Bruins. The ancient Greeks had four words for love. The most admirable is called agape, love as an action. For 175 years, New York life has been helping people act on their love. So they can look back or look ahead and say, we got it right. We did good. When you're building a business, it's easy to find a bank who says all the right things. They'll say they have the products and services you need and blah, blah, blah. They go on and on saying they'll blah, blah this and blah, blah that. But when it comes time to actually expanding your business, well, that's when you need Pacific Premier Bank. We're completely dedicated to supporting our clients' growth. And that's no blah, blah, blah. Pacific Premier Bank, where business meets opportunity. Welcome back to Tucson, Arizona. Taking a look at the batting order for Mike Candrea. It'll be Janelle Mionio, Rainier Carranco, Jesse Harper, Deja Mulipolo, Mulipola, Charlize Palacios, Malia Martinez, Alyssa Palomino Cardoza, Carly Scoopin, and Hannah Martinez. In the circle, the all world everything, Rachel <laughs> Garcia, 12 and 0 
with the lowest ERA in the country, Kenzie. I just got to soak it in a little bit that this is the last series. I most likely will be covering her. She has just been so fun to watch over her career at UCLA. Throws in that upper to high 60s, can touch 70 miles an hour when she needs to. Has a deadly combination of a backdoor curve and a rise ball. And it's one of those things where you know it's coming, you still can't hit it. And she's been developing a little bit more of an off speed and down ball this year. So I'll be interested to see kind of what she shows Arizona because she has a little bit of everything. Well, Mionio is a freshman of the year candidate here in the Pac-12, and she has been fantastic. She had a 27-game hit streak end in Eugene, but she still leads the conference with a 460 batting average. Yeah, looking at a candidate for potentially a Pac-12 freshman of the year. She's having an outstanding season. So we know Rachel Garcia is formidable, but she has been spotted a three-run <laughs> lead. Yeah. How does Arizona get on the board against her? You don't want to look at the scoreboard, really. It's going to, it would be too daunting because of who's in the circle. You just really have to try and put some good at bats together and focus on, as cliche as it sounds, one batter at a time, one inning at a time. Because if you look at the scoreboard, look at Garcia, it can get overwhelming very quickly. But it's a long weekend and four games for a reason. Mike Andrea surveying. His Wildcats have not lost a game here at Hill and Brand since last year. The win streak, 30 straight games dating back to last season here at home. Little chopper, no play. So that's a single, nice start for Mionio. We expect nothing less. Her barrel control is just out of this world. That's why her average is closing in on almost 500 at this point. This is textbook slapping. If there's any youngsters out there watching this game, lefty slapper yourself, that's how it's done. Put the ball hard on the ground, get that bounce, good things will happen. So Mionio is on first for Reina Caranco. Of course, Caranco missed time earlier this season with a broken right thumb. But she's gotten that batting average up the more she has played. It's now at 339 with three doubles, a home run, and 10 RBI. Yeah, Reina Caranco, part of that super senior class for Arizona that will be talking about most likely all weekend. A lot of ex expectations for this club going into this season because of how talented this senior class is. Garcia gets ahead one and two, despite the umps in the stands trying to help our home plate umpire Mike Bartling out. Garcia, Garcia yeah, she, wanted that one. She's just pounding that outside zone to both Mionio and now Caranco. It's her backdoor curve that she's throwing. Starts it outside by the white. By the time it breaks, she's trying to cut it over the back end of the plate. Caranco tries to go down the line, but it's foul. So Mionio will trot back to first. Count is even two and two. Mionio on first for Caranco. And a full count again, three and two. Caranco has drawn 10 walks this season, and Harper is in the on-deck circle. Slaps it down the third baseline foul. 
and we'll do it all over again. Yeah, nice at bat right here for Caronco. And a good response for Arizona. You, t you touched on how do you respond? You have Rachel Garcia, defending player of the year in the circle. You have a nice single from Mionio, and this is a nice at bat right here. Multiple foul balls, drawing the count full. Chopper to short, and the runner is erased at second as Mionio goes down. But still, that leaves a runner aboard for Harper. Look at this play by Brie Perez. Goes down to her backhand, a ton of speed with Janelle Mionio running in to second base. There is no room for error with that play. And that's the only play she has, having to go to her right. Karanka runs too well down the line. A big time out. Jesse Harper, along with Deja Mulipola, the only two Wildcats to start and play in every single game this season. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself when I look out at this field and she is not playing shortstop for the Wildcats. <laughs> it's a big senior class. One of seven super seniors on the roster. But you know what, I'll tell you, in facing Rachel Garcia, you see the home run leaders where she's at? I mean, this is the senior class. If anyone's not gonna be intimidated, it's gonna be this group for Arizona. You know, they've kind of grown up with Rachel Garcia going up against her their entire career. And so a lot of young teams may, may see this situation as too big, too daunting. But if any group can come back from it and put up a little rally, it's this Arizona senior class. In the last five games, Jesse is hitting a team best 429 with two homers. It's Garcia ahead one and two with one out. Got a little underneath that one goes foul. You've got to be careful with that rise ball against Harper. She will go up and get anything, and she'll get her barrel to it. That was a nice job by Garcia spotting it in on her hands. If that ball drifts over the white, she can do a ton of damage. With Caranco on first, it's Harper. Big swing and a miss. And Harper will take a seat. Talking about that rise ball, sets up this pitch right here, the down ball, her drop ball. This is a pitch that she doesn't need to throw a lot, but when she does, you can see how far off Jesse Harper was. And it's a pitch that she's really, Garcia's really been working on the last couple of seasons. So from rise ball to drop ball. It's Olympian versus Olympian, as Deja Mulipola steps in. Redshirt senior out of Garden Grove, California. A team high 49 RBI and tied for the team home run lead with 15. Ball gets by Garcia and so Caranco will take second. Every time we have this at bat, I'm gonna be watching it a little bit a little bit more just because these two players are going to be teammates this summer. Right. They're going to be representing the United States. Hello, Tokyo. Could be our battery. And Garcia gets ahead one and two. Coming off of the wild pitch, Garcia just sticks this curveball. Mm. That was nasty. Yeah, you can't throw it better than that. And oh, by the way, that's touching 70. That was a tough pitch at the knees. Gracious. That made my knees buckle and I'm sitting down. Count evens at two and two. Garanko on second in scoring position for Mulipola.
Marie Pola gets a hold of it, but can't come through with the single as the UCLA defense holds. So we are going to the top of the second inning. Wendy's new bourbon bacon cheeseburger is here because Wendy's goes all in on flavor, unlike other places. Innovation is this team's secret sauce. Isn't our secret sauce kind of like Thousand Island? Don't say it out loud. Hurry into Wendy's and try the new bourbon bacon cheeseburger. New movies and top hits, now at Redbox. The Little Things, starring Denzel Washington. Judas and the Black Messiah. And the theatrical home release of Nobody. Rent new movies at the kiosk and on demand. From action and suspense to comedy and drama, Redbox has something for everyone. Visit redbox.com for all the ways to watch. If I could be you, you could be me. For just one hour, walk a mile in my shoes, walk a mile in my shoes. Well, it just makes me incredibly proud. Uh, the institutions are the finest academic institutions in the world. And I believe the history of the Conference of Champions is something we need to talk about more. It's the greatest sports league in college athletics, I believe. And I believe it's our birthright to be that again. Well, that's the voice of our new Pac-12 commissioner, George Klyovkov. He introduced himself to the world today, taking a look at his resume. He is the fifth Pac-12 commissioner in league history, and he starts rolling up his sleeves on July the 1st. Hopefully catching some softball because we've got some good matchups. This right. Weekend. Aaliyah Jordan looking to add to that 3 0 UCLA lead. This is a Bruins team that only has three losses all season long and wants to extend its 12 win, 12 game win streak. Denon back in the circle. Got ahead quickly 0 and 2 and now 1 and 2. Yeah, UCLA bad through the lineup in the top of the first. Leah Jordan, she's their leadoff, so same situation here in the second. Leah Jordan has hit a home run in five straight Pac-12 series coming in. And the way the Bruins have been locked in. Very curious to see if she can get a hold of one. I give a ton of credit to Denim though. Her composure has been ideal. And there it goes at the wall. Jordan Yard, her seventh home run of the season. Well, on her first at bat in the first inning, she only saw one pitch. So I think her strategy this go around was, you know what, I'm going to see a couple more pitches, draws the count full, gets a pitch up in the zone. And her power, I mean, she's one of the strongest hitters in the Pac-12 conference. Alyssa Denham just really can't believe it. But look where this pitch is. Jordan doesn't even have to move her hands. Every home run that has been hit early in this game off Denham has been up in the zone. And you can see Muli Pola set up down low. You watch her glove drift up. Just another missed spot. And it's unfortunate for Denham. She's a better pitcher. She knows it. We're going to see a pitching change here. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Denham in this series again. She just needs to regroup a little bit and, and take a breath. If there is a bright spot, if there is a bright spot for Arizona, it's the fact that they're just solo shots. Yeah, it, you think about that last inning where UCLA 
batted through the first. They had bases loaded mm -hmm. for Kelly Gooden. I mean, the damage could have been a lot worse for Arizona, so. Yeah, it could have been a real crooked number. Four home runs, solo home runs, still doesn't feel any better, but you're exactly right. Solo home runs, I mean, you think about a team like Arizona, you just get the bases loaded and get right back in it. <laughs> So what can we expect out of Mariah Lopez? Yeah, another senior for Arizona, transferred from Oklahoma a couple seasons ago. And she's going to be the opposite of Denim. She's a pure rise ball pitcher, has been working on her off speed, but that up ball is her go-to. She has great movement. And we'll see her work up in the zone. Bree Perez steps back in. About 800 fans very throatily disagreeing with home plate umpire Mike Bartling. About 30% of the 2,600 capacity here at Helen Brand on hand tonight. from Martinez, California, the redshirt junior. She leads UCLA in the RBI department with 36. She also has 22 strikeouts. And Bree draws a walk. Uh, they say chicks dig the long ball. These Bruins sure do. <laughs> I mean, seems like it was a whole game ago at this point. This was a long inning for UCLA. Back to back to back. It went senior, junior, and then freshman. And the Bruins were pumped up in the dugout. Bree Perez on the run, and she's in there safely. She came into this game 12 for 13 in the stolen base department. That miscue behind the plate puts a runner in scoring position. For Garcia. Lopez trying to show an off speed first pitch to Garcia. Really nice job by Molly Pola trying to, to run that ball down. The fact that her throw is that close. Brie Perez runs incredibly well. Garcia calls for time. She's been a Pac-12 Pitcher of the Week three times this season, giving her a school record 14 Conference Pitcher of the Week awards. They might want to name the award after her at this point. <laughs> But she's also so lethal at the dish, batting 383 with now 10 home runs. Lopez gets the strike call, count evens at two and two. Bree Perez on second for Garcia. Count goes full, three and two. And that home run Garcia hit in that first inning was on two strikes, so you can tell Lopez being very careful, even though she does have two strikes. Draws the count full. Chopper to short, Harper to first. That'll erase Garcia, and Perez will advance to third. Oh. 
Lopez does a nice job getting Garcia to ground out and really good base running there from Brie Perez. She was going as soon as that ball was on down angle, no hesitation. Harper might have had a play at third, but that's a really risky throw, having to turn your feet and kind of throw it back behind you. But if anybody can do it. <laughs> One thing you got to give credit to for UCLA is they know how to run the bases. They just get after it. Sometimes they're a little too aggressive, in my opinion. I've seen them kind of run themselves out of rallies at times, but they're just one of those teams that say, no, we're not going to change our philosophy. We want to take the extra base any sniff. Wills with a big swing and a miss. Fouling that back. Down 0-2. And Wiz is a player who stepped up selflessly when the Bruins had tryouts for catcher due to multiple injuries on the team. She also played third and first. She's a dude. Yeah, talking to coach Inway Perez, she said, we are so fortunate to have Delaney Woods on our team. Transferred over from LMU. Got a, got a brief look at her in that 2020 season and it's kind of one of those things like, oh, who's this hitter? She's good. <laughs> yeah, in 2020, she was second on the team with five home runs. Grounder. Play at the plate. And Perez is in there safely. Thought Scoopin was going to make that play. But the runner is safe. And this is the base running, the aggressiveness that I was talking about. Look at Kronko. This is a hot shot. Bari Perez, she's down the line. Kronko needs to go at her. It's another good angle here. Delaney Wiz, she scorches this ball. Look how quickly Kronko gets it. And look, you can see where Bri Perez is. As soon as Kronko goes to turn to make that throw, too much speed down the line. And that's what UCLA does. They put the pressure on you on the base pass. We saw the big long ball from Brady in her last at bat. This one, she pops up and Alyssa Palomino Cardoza ends the inning. A couple of more runs score though, because Aaliyah Jordan has some pop. A home run now in six straight series. Wow. Chevy es la línea de vehículos de más rápido crecimiento en América y la gente los está llevando a todas partes. Llevan su Trailblazer a la naturaleza, llevan su Equinox con confianza a nuevos lugares y llevan a cabo más tareas con su Silverado. Sin importar a dónde vayas, hay un Chevy perfecto para llevarte a cualquier parte. Encuentra tu Chevy perfecto y obtén un valor total de $5,250 en esta Silverado 1500-2021 cabina extendida Texas Edition. Chevy mueve a Texas. Find new roads. I've always been a fighter. Couldn't be more proud of a group of players. This thing's about to get really, really good. My name's Kelly Inouye Perez, head softball coach at UCLA, and you're watching Pac-12 LA. Welcome back to Tucson, Arizona. Taking a look at the Pac-12 leaders in offense this season, and how about the freshman, Mionio, 460 batting average. Maddie Hackbar, ASU off this weekend, is watching everybody and waiting for selection Sunday. Deja Mulipolo on base percentage, and Haley Denning, those 30 steals, that is a monster number for I Utah. Know what the record is, because right? so many steals. Another freshman, dynamic player, Haley Denning, probably the fastest player in the Pac-12 conference, but look at that average from Janelle Mionio. A freshman hitting 460 in the pack. Are you kidding? Charlize Palacio steps in. Ah! 
If you want to get some offense going, this might be the player to turn to. She's tied with Deja Mulipola for the Wildcats home run lead at 15 dingers coming in. She has started every game but one this season. Five foot six inch red shirt freshman from Chula Vista, California. Yeah, talking about Deja Mulipola, this is the heir apparent. And with how talented Deja Mulipola is, I mean, Charlize Palacios, there's going to be a very seamless transition. She's incredibly talented and has some pop in, in her stick. 15 home runs. She's down 0 and 2. She does have a team high 30 strikeouts. So it might be a feast or famine type of deal for Palacios. So we just got word from our great producer, David, that the steal record is 67. <laughs> yeah, but you got to think. Of, yeah, but that's in a regular season. Regular this season. has been anything but regular. I don't Because care. I think if she plays a full slate of games, she gets that record easily. Well, 67 in, in a series. I mean, that's just, and it was. It's a lot. I mean, Allison McCutcheon. So for all those Arizona fans that are watching, they will know that name was a speedster. Had to play against Coach Kelly I. Mm. Kind of went at it with that Arizona UCLA battle. But 67. Wow. I would have been so excited to get one. <laughs> Okay, after flying out to Gooden, it's Malia Martinez. Martinez, first pitch hacking. It was really fun to talk to both coaches coming into this weekend about this rivalry. And Coach, Coach Kelly I played for UCLA mm -hmm. while Coach Candrea was coaching for Arizona. I mean, he's father Pac-12, so he's seen it all. Chopper to third, no problem there for Tessa Malaulu. Taking a look at how many times these two teams have met in the World Series championship game. That's just ridiculous. Utah, and this is exactly what I want to see, by the way, in Oklahoma City in just a few weeks. I won an all Pac-12 championship game. We had it in basketball. We had it in beach volleyball, basketball on the women's side. I know Coach Gandrea is a huge fan of Adia Barnes, and he would love to get that kind of mojo going toward Oklahoma City. Yeah, and it's so cool because you see all those times they've met in the championship at the Women's College World Series, and both have head coaches have been a part of every single one of those championships. I mean, that's just something that you just kind of have to sit with for a second and say, wow. <laughs> it is awesome. It is epically awesome. Alyssa Palomino Cordoza right to third, where Malaulu lives and lives well. Speaking of Coach Candrea, we will have a chat with him in just a bit. In this family, everyone does their own laundry, but they all do it a little different. Honestly, I add a couple Tide Pods and just stuff everything in. It works. And of course, everyone thinks their way is right. I stood in line for hours to get this. It has to be washed on delicate. It has to be cold water. It's better for the planet. Secret is, with Tide Pods, it all works. Of course it does. Told ya. They get to do it their way, and I get a break from the laundry. No matter how you wash, it's got to be Tide. Have the power to make a difference and build a better future for the next generation. As Pac-12 fans, we need you to stand with us in this fight against racism. We have the leverage and we have the momentum right now. Why should we wait? Use your voice unapologetically and confidently, and the many who pay attention to Division I sports will follow. Not only do we need to recruit a diverse group of people, but we need to create an equitable and supportive environment for these individuals. That's what makes us the Conference of Champions.
Welcome back to Tucson, Arizona. Number eight, Arizona has some work to do against number two, UCLA. Let's welcome in head coach Mike Kendrea. Coach, how do you get your bats going against Garcia? Well, we just got to we just got to keep competing. You know, I mean, um, not not quite the start that I wanted and I don't think any of us wanted, but um, it it is what it is right now. We're down by five. We have to shut them down and we have to peck away. Coach, I was talking about if any any team is not going to be intimidated by Garcia, yeah. it's going to be this the senior mm -hmm. class. They play a lot. What do you have to say about their mentality facing her in the circle? Well, I, I think the mentality is good right now. It's just a matter of getting our eyes adjusted and making sure we're swinging at good pitches. You know, she jammed a couple of us right there. Um, but uh, yeah, there's no secrets. You know, I think it's just a matter of going up there and competing, um, kind of like they did coming in. You know, the first inning and. Um, it was, uh, like I said, not the start I wanted, but you know, we got plenty, to, plenty yeah. to go. I've been through a lot of these before, and <laughs> a couple, yeah, a couple. So, well, coach, I'm looking out outside, and it, this is the most fans yeah. that you've had. Also, what does that yeah. mean to have this many well, fans? It's great. I mean, it's been a long time coming, and, yeah. and we were very excited about this. And um, you know, we 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 just got to make sure that we're um, taking care of business on the field right now. All right, Coach, All right. thanks so much for the time. All right, take, take care, Brenda. All right. Anna Vines finding some grass with the single. So she is on first for Alyssa Garcia. It's a good crowd, crowd on hand. Yeah, about 800 fans in total. Capacity right around 2,600 uh, due to COVID regulations, 30% of the fans are allowed in, and those tickets were gone in a hurry. Yeah, Kendria's corner out there in left field. Garcia gets a hold of one in the gap, hits the wall. She'll stay at first, and Vines will advance to third. First baseman number 37, Kinsley Washington. Going back to our chat with Kelly Inoue Perez, this is exactly what she wanted her offense to do, pass the bat. You know, it's so interesting when you talk about UCLA, they are so good. You look at who's on their roster and you just kind of start to go through their stats and you're like, wow, okay, All-American, All-American, Player of the Year, underrated, super freshman. They're so incredibly talented. But it sounds kind of funny to say they don't jump off the page to me statistically. They're just so incredibly balanced. You know why? Because we talk a lot and cover Arizona State and Arizona <laughs> that just thump all over the place and put up RBIs like they're Tic Tacs flying out of a little box. Yeah, it's so true. There's not one player. I mean, of course, Rachel Garcia, goat, but there's not one player that you're looking at on paper going, wow, okay, you got to really stay away from her. They're just so balanced. They're so, I don't know, deep, calm, cool, collected. They're just quietly one unified team. Very impressive. Pinch runner Tessa Malaulu on first now. Go, Mike. You're the game. Fines is on third. Kinsley Washington gets her instructions on what to do. Looks like Washington, a little bit of a mix up with her sign card. Just want to make sure she had the right one if she gets some signs from third base coach Kirk Walker. This is a Bruins team that's only lost one game on the road this season. One. Washington gives that a ride at the wall is Mionio robbing the home run. Gets it in quickly. The run will score. What a terrific play by Mionio. We've seen her do this. Yes, we have. We saw her take a Hackbarth home run away at ASU. Yeah, standing ovation right here for this super freshman. This is someone who I think has a really good chance of being named Pac-12 Freshman of the Year. She's just an absolute superstar. And Washington says, are you kidding? 
<laughs> Good reaction right there from the junior. And you gotta love this right here. Big Mama APC going over to love on her freshman. It's a big time catch. So with Mala Ulu on first pinch running, it is Kelly Gooden. And I tell, tell you what, the defense from Arizona, that's three straight shots off the bats from UCL, UCLA. And the damage could have been much worse, but credit Arizona's defense. You can see Mala Ulu goes over, does not tag up, so she remains at first base. Only one run allowed. And back to a, a couple plays ago, Peanut Martinez, I thought, did a really good job in right field getting in a laser to the fence. Got it in very quick. Limited Alyssa Garcia to just a long single. But, I mean, Mariah Ry Lopez needs to change a little bit of something up because those last three hits have been shots. Yeah, it was a very impressive RBI sack fly. <laughs> UCLA is on top six to nothing here in the top of the third. If you're just tuning in, you missed back to back to back home runs by Garcia, Wiz, and Brady in the top of the first. They were able to chase starting pitcher Alyssa Denham. And now Mariah Lopez is trying to bring some calm in the circle for Arizona. You know, we mentioned that we covered ASU in a couple of series. I'll never forget Trisha Ford and her reaction when we asked her, okay, you've seen both UCLA and Oklahoma, which team is better? And she didn't hesitate, UCLA. Ground out advances the runner. So Ma'alulu is on second. For Aaliyah Jordan, we know what she did in her last at bat. Well, that sounded good off the bat going foul. She has some serious power. Well, I'm looking at my scorebook right now and of course, UCLA, the visitors, but this is Aaliyah Jordan's third at bat. Here in the top of the third. Native of Chula Vista, California. She's very patient at the plate as well. A team high 26 walks drawn coming into this game. She knows what she likes when she sees it. Yeah, I haven't seen her lead off in her career until this season. Well, she moved into the leadoff spot last month when Bubba Nichols went down to that injury yep. on her left wrist. Yep. So UCLA, for as good as they are and what they're showing right now, they're missing maybe their best bat. Isn't that insane? I mean, Bubba Nichols, an Olympian, has been their leadoff the last couple of seasons. Of course, sat out in 2020 to be with Team USA. And so coach Kelly anyway Perez is trying to figure out, okay, who can be our leadoff until we hopefully get Bubba back. Jordan to the wall. RBI double for Aaliyah Jordan. Just so compact out in front a little bit and still hits it opposite field. You can just tell great control of her legs. A ton of speed, Tessa Malaulu, scoring very easily. And UCLA just keeping on, keeping on. No play by Caranco. As Perez is on with ease. This is a really nice job of Reina Caranco. There's really no chance for her to turn and make this play at first base. So just holding the ball, not making the extra throw. You could see Jordan, she was on her horse. If Caranco makes that throw to first base, I think Jordan continues to round third and try and push that run. So with two down, runners are on the corners for Garcia. Rachel skies that one up. And Malia Martinez at the 
dugout edge makes the catch and that ends yet another Bruins threat but the damage is done seven nothing is the count advantage UCLA excellence knows it's not going to be perfect it's about putting courage first taking risks trusting my athleticism canceling out the negativity because preparation equals confidence and confidence is born from courage what's your mantra Pac-12 Hour Stories, bringing you the most compelling and emotional stories from around the Conference of Champions. You may not get the limelight, but you help push the agenda over the finish line. This is where the family and the community of your team really show. They're not going to give you the answers, but they're going to give you the support that you need. Pac-12 Hour Stories. Watch the latest episode anytime on Pac-12 Now. Presented by Pacific Premier Bank. Welcome back to Tucson. Time for our State Farm Showcase. And yeah, it's my partner, Kenzie Fowler. I'm oh, what a nasty pitch. I was thinking it was going to be the three back-to-back -back home runs for UCLA. That's, Are you kidding me? That's some trickery no. from our team right there. Outstanding. Two-time All-American is Kenzie Fowler. Injuries derailed her career, and yet still a stud. <laughs> and still at the field, even though it looks a little <laughs> bit different than those clips you just saw. Right? How impressive is Helen Brand? I mean, I'm just glad I, I get to be on this side of it for broadcasting. And look at this press box. This was not here a couple of years ago, so. I understand it was a tin box and got yeah, it was very little, heated. It was a little hot, it was, especially in May. Like 100 degrees today. So this oh, is pretty yeah. nice. No, this is outstanding. Are you paying attention, selection committee? <laughs> regional, super regional, just saying. Very nice. The friendly confines here at Rita Hillen Brand Stadium. We're so glad to have you along the way. And if you're a UCLA fan, you have had a lot to cheer about. Rachel Garcia spotted to a 7-0 lead. And here in the bottom of the third, Arizona trying to get on the board. This is an Arizona team that is four and 10 against ranked teams this season, playing a ranked team at home for the first time this season. Carly Scoopin steps in for the Wildcats. Yeah, Arizona has had a really tough schedule this year in terms of just matchups and, and playing ranked teams on the road played at Oregon, at Washington, at UCLA. So mm. this is really the, the team that you circle, okay, finally, <laughs> we get a we get a big time matchup in our home ballpark. It's tough to play on the road in the Pac-12 conference, and especially when you're playing the quality of teams that we have and, and those four ranked opponents, so. Yeah, we have five teams in the top 12, five. Yeah. UCLA, UW, Arizona, Oregon, and ASU. No other conference has more than three in the top 12. Scooping with a big swing and a miss. That'll even the count at two and two. So, so it's just think about Rachel Garcia's ERA for a second. 0.59, and that's who her opponent has been this entire season. Are you kidding? It's bananas. <laughs> Scooping, battling. She has played in all but two games this season, batting 340 with nine homers and five doubles. She's part of that freshman sensation class. Six foot. And she is from right here in Tucson, Tucson High School. And she's been locked in over the last 10 games. She's batting a team best 524. Good eye there. In that 10 game stretch, she also has three home runs and 10 RBI. If the offense can start for the Cats, it can start with number 20. Yeah, well, she's 
one of those players that we've talked about the big senior class in Arizona. She's she's the future, one of those big bats that will look to replace the likes of Jesse Harper, APC, Muli Pola. I mean, she has the ability to put together that caliber of a career. What is the conversation here? This is the first little bit of duress we have seen from Rachel Garcia. Rachel Garcia, I mean, she knows what she wants as a pitcher. She's a very veteran player, obviously a member of our Olympic team. So just a quick timeout, and I'm sure this is what I want. Let's throw it right now. Scooping continues to battle. Taking a look at the UCLA Bruins in the circle. Gracious. Yeah, so it's not just Rachel Garcia, Megan Framo, and even Holly Azevedo has put together a really solid season, unbeaten. Team ERA of 1.15, second lowest in all of softball. Terrific at bat by Scoop, and she draws the walk. Yeah, even though this game right now seems to be a little bit out of hand for Arizona 7-0, you're facing the defending national player of the year in the circle. For Arizona, it's all about building that database against her and kind of working those at bats for later this weekend. Yes. Yeah, because that was Scoopin's first at bat of the game. Absolutely, and there's still time, of course, Arizona with the way they swing it. Who knows what could happen? We've seen crazier things, right, in the Pac-12 conference. But for me, you're, you're taking these at bats right now and, and you're working on what you're seeing off of Garcia, putting some things together for maybe tomorrow, maybe, maybe Saturday. Julia. Kutsu Yiannopoulos is on first pinch running for Scoopin. As Peanut Martinez steps in. Peanut on the season, 286, four home runs, 14 RBI. Coach says sometimes Peanut gets in trouble because she wants to play perfect. She just simply has to give herself a break. Trying to get the bunt down there. She's the five foot seven inch junior from Garden Grove, California. Garcia with a runner on first. Count is one and two. Garcia got ahead of Scoopin in that at bat, had two strikes and credit to Scoopin, a couple of foul balls, was able to draw the walk. Chopper, double play opportunity? No, but they do erase the base runner. Fans in the stands don't agree as Vines was able to make the play. This was as close as it gets. Let's see it this again. Was, this is the only play that Anna Vines has up the middle. Pina Martinez runs pretty well down the line, but so does Julia Kutsianopoulos. She's got a ton of speed. Watch her right here going all the way to second. Tough play. Bang, bang, play. Good diving effort from Vine, the second baseman. Oof, that's close. So Peanut Martinez is on first for Janelle Mionio. Arizona here in the bottom of the third inning has finally went through the lineup. Mionio feasted on home cooking, batting 607 here at Hillenbrand. And I think one of the most impressive things about her as a slapper, she has hit a home run. 
but she slapped it. I know, but it was it was still a home run against GCU last month. That was one of those deals where I rewound the tape. I'm like, yeah. what? What? We were watching it on the live stream, and I texted the SID for Arizona, Danny Martinez, and said, does that really go over the fence? Is that a slap? Right. <laughs> Did I see what I just saw? Bananas. And we've seen her athleticism out and left. And you can see her starting in that, in that bunt kind of stance setup. Count evens at two and two, and she is APC's heir apparent in center, correct? Yeah, this is someone, we're talking about Carly Scoopin, freshman, Janelle Mionio, Charlize Palacios, some really talented freshmen for Arizona. Julia Kutsianopoulos, just saw her pinch run, she's a great player as well. There's gonna be a ton to replace after this season, and if you're an Arizona fan and you see someone like Janelle Mionio, you kind of take, okay, whew, we're going to be all right. Right. <laughs> we've got we've got a talented player that's going to hold, you know, this starting position most likely for her entire career. They'll slide over to center field most likely when APC graduates. Garcia checking her card. Mionio down the line foul. Let me just tell you, as a pitcher, these types of hitters are the worst. <laughs> so frustrating. You mean aggravating. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And you can see the timeout right here yeah. from Garcia to Garcia, just saying, okay, what do we got to throw right here to put her away? Because slap hitters so pesky, especially when someone like Janelle Mionio has that barrel control. Just, I don't like it. I'm just going to tap it. I don't like this one either. I'm just going to tap it. I would love to see something down in the dirt here. Get her out in front a little bit. They're just so hard to pitch to. Chopper up the middle. Garcia fields her position beautifully. Runner advances to second in Martinez. Yes, that feels good for Garcia. If I'm going to throw this many pitches, I want the out. <laughs> she gets the out. So there are two down with a runner on second, Peanut Martinez for Reina Caranco. I love Mike Candrea when talking about Caranco. She said, or he said rather, Reina is a professional hitter, and we need her in our lineup, period. Yeah, she was the Pac-12 batting champion a couple of seasons ago. Hit over 430. Yeah, 433. Yeah. UA's first ever recipient of that award. When you think of the folks that have come through the Arizona program, goodness. Maya Brady gets under that one, and that will end the threat. You don't get to number two in the nation without playing some great defense to back up your star pitcher. UCLA getting it done all over the diamond tonight, up seven to nothing. I don't think we're free in this country. For 100 years, you saw black people menaced and targeted and lynched and beaten and brutalized. I think we're burdened by this history. More people have to be willing to do that uncomfortable, inconvenient thing that justice requires for things to get better. Truth can inspire change. Learn more at EJI.org. The ancient Greeks had four words for love. The most admirable is called agape. Love as an action. For 175 years, New York Life has been helping people act on their love. So they can look back or look ahead and say, we got it right. We did good.
UW getting the win again today, and Gabby Plain was sensational. I mean, I love watching Gabby Plain pitch. So effortless. And I tell you what, playing Stanford, they're a good team, so credit the Aussie in the circle for UW. Just watch her pitches move right there. I mean, how do you hit it? <laughs> And you love the fact that she's a fellow ginger That's to right. admit right. it. That's right. So she gets the win with ease. Taking a look at the Pac-12 standings. Yeah, that's right. We're Pac-12 after dark here in Tucson, baby. UCLA just two wins away from an 11th conference title. Rolling right now up seven to nothing. UCLA at 16 and two. Washington right there, just a half game back. And Arizona at 12 and 7, that Bruins magic number, as I mentioned, down to 2. And I don't think UW is going to help the Bruins out. <laughs> don't think they're going to just go, ah, you know what, let's let off the gas pedal a little bit. I'm talking about the pitching in the Pac-12. You have Rachel Garcia, who's just done it all, and then Gabby Plain, she's right there with her in terms of how good and dominant they both have been this season. It's been so fun to watch this team and every coach that you talk to. It's just a bus on. It doesn't matter who is on your schedule. The only really break teams have gotten is COVID pauses. Otherwise, it's just been a bus saw. Yeah, UCLA, they've had a really shortened season. I mean, this is a team that missed a lot of weekends. And I feel like they are just now kind of getting in mid-season form, as crazy as that sounds, because of how many interruptions they've had. I mean, I'm not positive about this, but they might, might have been the most impacted, maybe not for Cal, in, in the conference in terms of missing games. Yeah. Whether it was there on their end or their opponent's end, you know, really doesn't matter, games missed or games missed. Yeah, only have the three losses on the season, twice to Oregon, which just speaks to how good Brooke Yanez is, another pitcher that has just been sensational. And then one to UW. Hot shot right to Kutsiyanopoulos, who's all over it. That was outstanding. <laughs> yeah, goes over to Karanko, says, all right, I got it. Mm, no sweat. Kutsianopoulos came in to pinch run for first baseman Carly Scoopin, but she's one of the best defensive first basemen, in my opinion, in the pack. And just a true freshman. Yeah, that's a hot shot. Be ready. Base is empty for Maya Brady. We know she's got the long ball pop. And Kelly Inouye Perez says, when you look at Brady, you're looking at the face of UCLA softball going forward. Yeah, so we were talking about the talented freshman for Arizona. Well, UCLA, they've got themselves a, a couple as well. I've seen Tessa Malauulu this season, Maya Brady. And there's some, there's some good ones. Alyssa Garcia coming down the line, but I thought it was really interesting. I, we asked about Maya Brady, and she said she hits it as hard as Rachel Garcia. Which is ridiculous. I mean, as a freshman? Yeah, ferocious power. We saw it in the first home run that she hit out tonight. And Kelly said Rachel hits it the hardest on the team. There's no question. She said when it comes off her bat, it's just a little different. But Maya's right there with her. Yeah, we need exit velo on that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Good athlete, five-tool player. And she's got that famous uncle. Whatever. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> I only say that because my husband's from Boston, and I have a Tom Brady Christmas ornament that right. I've been dying to get rid of for years now. And I thought for sure once the trade to Tampa Bay went down, I could, you know, yeah. quietly throw it away. No, no, because he won again for criminy sakes. <laughs> Brady, did she get under it? No, she did not. That is gone. Her second home run of the night, and it was off the wall. Wow. Well, we were talking about her power. Mm. <laughs> Alyssa Garcia is standing there going, what did that just happen?
10 home runs this season, two tonight. I don't know if we're gonna have the replay of where this this hit landed, but watch this swing. This is a It hit ball. off the building. It's a rise ball. She goes up to meet it. When you have the power that Maya Brady has and you go up to meet a pitch, this is what can happen. She misses a roof shot by an inch. That and was... Vines ropes one <laughs> in front of Mionio. Unbelievable. I mean, good hit, Anna Vines. We'll give it to you, but I'm I'm going to be gawking over that home run for the rest of the night. That's bananas. I've seen a lot of home runs hit in this ballpark. I have never seen one go off that building. I've had a couple of teammates be able to hit this ball. It's a very exclusive club when you can hit a home run. Call it the Giddings Roof. It's getting Jim right there, and she misses it inches. I had a couple of teammates shout them out. Chelsea Goodacre, Lini Correa. I believe Carly Scoopin hit one earlier this season up on the roof. That is an incredible thing to do. The fact that she was that close. I mean, well, the Goodings Jim shot, we'll call it, uh, means that UCLA has hit five home runs tonight, and that's a season high for them to take that eight nothing lead. I'm sure UCLA fans at home are doing some sort of eight clap dance with the eight runs on the board. Arizona unable to turn two as Harper throws it into the dugout. So Garcia is safe at first. Rare miscue by Jesse. Yeah, that's a tough play here for Harper. Just got to make sure you sure up this first out. Good job timing up her throw. You could see her kind of run into Anna Vines, who is sliding right into second base. Just one of those things going up, up the line like that. It's a tough play. Well, Arizona is terrific when it comes to double plays. They're fifth in the nation with 21 double plays turned tops in the pack 12. Washington finds some grass in front of Mionio. So now the line just keeps moving for UCLA. Yeah, for Arizona, they're a phenomenal defensive team. I mean, five seniors that play important positions, but the problem for Arizona is when the ball's been hit, it's out of the ballpark. It's either out of the ballpark or where people aren't. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to defend that. There's really nothing Arizona can do. And UCLA has just been whatever they've been getting from Arizona. They've been all over it. So Julie Rodriguez is going to come in and pinch hit for Gooden. I wonder if Maya's moved on from that home run because I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. I had to write down what building that was because I've never seen anybody hit a ball that far. I wrote in my scorebook, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and even that doesn't do it justice. I didn't really know what else to write. <laughs> I just put wow. Unfreaking believable. <laughs> Julie Rodriguez, five foot three inch senior. She's from Norwood, New Jersey. Ball gets away from Muli Pola, so both runners advance. Garcia on third. New angle on this homer. Oof. Ooh. It goes out of the screen. You don't, where'd it go? We lost it. That is so epically awesome. Garcia on third, Washington on second. Rodriguez appearing in her 26th game this season. She had nine hits and 27 at bats in 2020, batting 333. She's got some pop, she had a home run. Yeah, Julie Rodriguez, part of big senior class for UCLA. Grounder to Kutsi Yiannopoulos, he'll take care of it. And that 
ends the inning, but not before Maya Brady destroys this softball. You feel sorry for the cover of the softball off the Goodings Gym wall. Wow. Champions aren't instantaneous. Champions are made over time, with years of hard work, determination, and every step, leap, shot, and risk they are willing to take. There's something in a champion's DNA that drives from within, pushes limits, exceeds expectations, and knows what it takes to lead. It's who we are what we stand for, and what we've always done. That's why we proudly celebrate the female student athlete, the national titles, the Olympic medals, the achievements of every day, because the strength and the power that are women's sports continues to be elevated by this conference. The Pac-12, the Conference of Champions. Welcome back to Tucson. Quite the offensive display by UCLA, ranked second in the nation, blanking Arizona. We'd like to welcome in head coach of the Bruins. She is Kelly Inoue Perez. Kelly, be honest. Have you ever seen Maya Brady crush a ball like we just witnessed? Well, I can tell um, if you want me to be honest. I've I do. seen her crush balls like on the sunset, but I've never seen a ball hit that far here. I mean, in a, in a game like that by far. Um, there's been a lot of home runs history of UCLA, Arizona, but that by far was the farthest I've ever seen. OK, <laughs> that building name is Giddings Gym. I had to find out that information because I've never seen a ball hit that wall. Seriously. So unbelievable. Seriously. But your team is this home run hitting team tonight you know At first we're like whoa it's a season high five and then boom what well you know I really credit the the schedule of the pack this year you know we as coaches pulled together and said we wanted to schedule more Pac-12 games have a tougher schedule to really prepare us for postseason because so many great teams in the pack um, I believe are going to have a great opportunity to get after um, a postseason run um, but with that we're battle tested we have great pitching we've had great hitting we've had games that have been really close and we've had some games that we've been able to put some hits together but I really credit the Pac-12 of putting us in a position of getting us to be at our best and obviously you know tonight is is a great night it's a special night but we've been through a lot to get to this point and our goal is to be our best here at the end yeah coach we were just talking about between the breaks of your schedule I feel like it's been you know you have lost a lot of games and lost a lot of weekends so up and down for you guys yeah. do you feel like your team is hitting the, their stride at the right time oh 100 percent and 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 a big part of a big part of that once again I you know I believe it's the scheduling but um, we have. We've had, and I think everybody in the country has. You know, we, this is a unique year of being able to have starts and stops and people in and out. You know, if we really look deeply, we haven't had everybody 100% throughout um, yeah. throughout the season. So I too, I, be, I believe we are in a position of of coming together and playing our best ball. You know, tonight is exciting. There's always great energy. You know, UCLA, Arizona. But I think it's a great way for us to finish out the pack right before postseason. All right, coach. We know you've got some coaching to do. We'll okay. let you go. Thanks for the time. Thank you. You know, thinking about both of our coaches' interviews, and it's uh, no secret, both coaches really talking about the strength of the conference. And of course, we're, we're finishing this weekend with, you know, the series of all series, Arizona UCLA. Epic. Yeah, always, every year, this is the one I always look forward to. It was the one I looked forward to as, as a young kid. It's the one I looked forward to as a player. It's now the one I look forward to as a broadcaster. But both coaches just really hammering home how hard it has been this season with the depth and the quality of teams. I mean, we just saw Gabby Plain, mm -hmm. incredibly hard to hit. And Stanford, really good team, kind of lower in the conference, up going up against Washington and Gabby Plain handling them. But UCLA, Arizona, I know Arizona State's not playing this weekend, and also Oregon. We talked to the coaches to get their take on just how tenacious this Pac-12 conference is. 
I always say that this is the toughest conference in the country, and I still believe it. And I think we have some teams that, you know, toward the bottom of our rankings that um, could do very well in postseason if they had the opportunity. Rankings and all of that are one thing, but we have been in a bloodbath against each other, and I hope that we get a payout to let this to unleash the Pac-12 teams into the into the postseason because, man, we are battle-tested and ready to compete. I truly believe it. I think the evidence is right in front of us. Mm. I mean, and we've seen it all season long. We have five teams in the top 12. No other conference has more than three in the top 12. And they haven't been in the top 12 and just getting there now. They have consistently dominated the top of the standings all season long in Division I softball. Yeah, and it's just, you know, iron forges iron, get better every single weekend. Every weekend in the pack is a super regional, or better yet, a World Series game, atmosphere, the quality. I mean, I believe in my whole heart that the Pac-12 could get four teams to the Women's College World Series. I think it's I like absol it. absolutely doable. The RPI backs you up, Kenzie. Look at that. UCLA <laughs> 1, Arizona 10, ASU 12, Washington 14, Oregon 15. And that's just unbelievable. Yeah, Stanford and Oregon State in the 40s. And that's because who have they played all season long? Oh, yeah. But even so, that 40 RPI, I mean, 60 teams. 64. Yeah, you get in there. I mean, that's a, that's a good number for those two squads. And Arizona coming into this weekend at 10, still having not played UCLA, number two ranked team in the nation. Deja Mulipola ahead three and one against Rachel Garcia. Grounder. Ooh, that gets and eats up vines. So Mui Pola's on board with a single. They're gonna give an error here to Anna Vines. And I mean, I think she'll tell you, yeah, I should turn my glove. That's all she needs to do right there. Or even better yet, open yourself up. You can see how her feet stay even. She needs to kick back her left foot, open her body up, allow that ball to travel deeper, flip her glove, see it deep. So tough play nonetheless. Muli Pola hits it hard into the ground, but I think she'll tell you, yeah, I should have had that one. Want to make sure that Anna Vines is okay because it looked like the ball then popped her in the face. So just a quick visit from the training staff. Yeah, so watch Molly Pola. She pounds this into the ground, so a tough hop over there at second base. Molly Pola, she runs very well down the line for a catcher, has a ton of speed. Kind of rides up her, her chin, that ball. So with Movie Pola on first, Charlize Palacios steps in. Palacios, when talking to head coach Mike Condrea, uh, gets compared to Movie Pola. He says they have the same kind of awesome raw power. Yes. I mean, Charlize, incredibly strong. Has a good arm behind the plate. Charlize, right to Aliyah Jordan. Oh, check that. My eyes say that's Seneca Kuro. Yes, Kuro. <laughs> I have glasses Heard for me reason. miss that change. <laughs> Seneca Curl. That's a little better. I can see that. There we go. <laughs> you know, when you have a home run and an RBI double, I guess you just kind of get to take the night off when you're a Leah Jordan. Yeah, I mean, but UCLA is so deep. I mean, they have players on players down their bench that can just jump in and play multiple positions. I think that was the feature that jumped out to me when we were on the coach's call as well as prepping for this game was it wasn't just one or two players playing multiple positions. I was close to double digits on my bookkeeping. Yes. It, it was crazy. It's, sometimes it's, it's hard to keep up just because they can just move people around. 
very easily. I mean, really, the one constant has been Brie Perez at shortstop and, and Kelly Gooden in that In outfield. left, yeah. yeah. I've seen Kelly Gooden, though, play third base. Very talented. I mean, how many outfielders? Maya Brady's another one of them that could just come in and play shortstop if, if they needed to. But, yeah, Brie Perez, she's been that mainstay. And Rachel Garcia just keeps on being the GOAT. Garcia, with her second strikeout of the night, ends the fourth inning. You are watching Pac-12 Los Angeles, home of the UCLA Bruins and USC Trojans. Available on Spectrum and Cox. Woo! You look good in that jockey tee. Really? Better wear that on date night. Time now for a check of our weather. Ah. You ready for date night, baby? It's tomorrow night, Luke. Remember, there's only one jockey. When you're building a business, it's easy to find a bank who says all the right things. They'll say they have the products and services you need, and blah, blah, blah. They go on and on saying they'll blah, blah this and blah, blah that. But when it comes time to actually expanding your business, well, that's when you need Pacific Premier Bank. We're completely dedicated to supporting our clients' growth. And that's no blah, blah, blah. Pacific Premier Bank, where business meets opportunity. Pac-12 Softball is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Rawlings. Champions choose Rawlings. Welcome back to Tucson, Arizona, Pac-12 softball after dark. And number two, UCLA dominating eighth-ranked Arizona, eight to nothing. And that's a set of proud parents in Christine and Tony Garcia watching Rachel just magically spin it in the circle. Yeah, I mean, how fun for them and the career of their daughter. I love that Stay Loose shirt there by Mom. Right on. Yeah, I think Rachel is the embodiment of Stay Loose. <laughs> well, and the fact that, you know, not only is she dominating the opposition in the circle, she's also hitting home runs, too. Speaking of the circle, Devin Nets. What can we expect from her? Yeah, Coach Candrea going to true freshman. So Denham get the start, Lopez middle relief, and... 8-0 at this point, want to get his his rookie some innings. Throws incredibly hard, can touch 70 miles an hour. Works a screwball and a curveball side to side. UCLA has scored in every inning in this game so far. Three in the first, two in the second, three in the third, and one in the fourth. Aliyah Jordan, a big part of that offense. She's had a big fly and an RBI double. Batting average up to 355. Jordan with the chopper to Caranco. It's all over it. That kind of reminds me of how Denham started tonight. First couple of batters, erased quickly, and then the home run barrage started. Brie Perez right to Kutsianopoulos. Easy play for the first baseman. Those are the two quickest outs we've seen from the Arizona circle tonight. Yeah, all the way back. Like you said, that's how the game started. Two quick outs in the first, two quick ground balls. Nice job, Devin Nets, coming in and keeping the ball low. I think that's something that Arizona and their pitching staff is going to talk about after this game. I mean, any time the pitch was elevated, belt high or higher, I mean, the, it was just absolutely crushed. And we've seen a couple of ground balls from UCLA off of the Arizona pitchers, and it was those down balls. Let's check out the parents, Christine and Tony, watching Rachel at the dish. Kind 
funny because to me, the, the fan in front of them has got his phone out and he's making sure he gets a good picture of Rachel and mom and dad are just chilling. I know. <laughs> That's our baby. Yep, get that phone back out. Don't want to miss a Garcia bomb. Yep, Garcia grounder to Harper. One, two, three, inning for Arizona. Something Wildcats fans want to see. Of course, the Garcia is very happy with their daughter and UCLA. Ever notice how stiff clothes can feel rough on your skin? It's because they rub against you, creating friction. And your clothes rub against you all day. For softer clothes that are gentle on your skin, try Downy Free and Gentle. Just pour into the rinse dispenser and Downy will soften your clothes without dyes or perfumes. The towel washed with Downy is softer, fluffier, and gentler on your skin. Try Downy Free and Gentle, recognized by the National Psoriasis Foundation and National Eczema Association. I can make a difference and build a better future for the next generation. As Pac-12 fans, we need you to stand with us in this fight against racism. We have the leverage and we have the momentum right now. Why should we wait? Use your voice unapologetically and confidently. And the many who pay attention to Division I sports will follow. Not only do we need to recruit a diverse group of people, but we need to create an equitable and supportive environment for these individuals. It's what makes us the Conference of Champions. My name's Kelly Enoy Perez, head softball coach at UCLA, and you're watching Pac-12 LA. It is time for a Rawlings player of the game here in Tucson, Arizona, and nobody is getting any votes when Maya Brady's on the ballot. I mean, Coach Kelly Inouye Perez calls her the future of UCLA softball. This is a freshman that just crushed the fifth home run for UCLA on the night, but by far it was the loudest, the furthest, and it took everyone's breath away. Yeah, off that Giddings gym wall for her first career multi-homer effort. Something tells me it will not be her last. So Arizona with the run rule in play with UCLA's eighth spot here in the bottom of the fifth. Needing to make some noise offensively. Alyssa Palomino Cardoza steps in. Rally caps, rally visors are on. And the 800 or so fans, 30% capacity in full throat, doing all they can to help these Wildcats. This is a team in Arizona that came in second in the Pac-12 in home runs with 81. And Rachel Garcia has kept those bats quiet. And as the game has gone along, Garcia in the circle has only looked uncomfortable for two or three pitches. <laughs> so stoic in the circle. And to me, this is a game that you, it tells you the importance of this game because UCLA jumped out early. And it, I think it would have been very easy for UCLA to maybe pull Garcia and maybe put in a Holly Azevedo, who's a, a very good pitcher in her own right, but doesn't get obviously as many innings as a Rachel Garcia. But the fact that they have left her in, even with an eight spot up on the board in run rule territory, just really highlights and shows UCLA wants this game. They want to get this game right now. Arizona is a team offensively that can jump back in any game. And we talked about this earlier, but this weekend for them, their magic number is two. Trying to cut that down to one right now. And I think Garcia has stayed in the circle because it's not just about this game tonight. It's about locking down National Player of the Year. Remember, she's on a ballot of 10 right now. That list gets cut down to three in a week. 
and she wants to be in consideration for that. If she comes out of this game, maybe that's yeah. not in play. No, you bet. And we talked about it earlier, how UCLA, in the scope of things, does not have as many games as a lot of the teams out there in the country. Alyssa Palomino Cardoza draws the hit by pitch as that ball got away from Garcia. Did she swing here? Yeah, you could see Rachel Garcia was going to ask home plate umpire Mike Bartling, hey, did, did she swing on that, whether it hit her or not? And that's a good call. She held. The ball just kind of runs in on the hands, curveball into a lefty. Taking a look at the wonder of Westwood year by year. And you talk about somebody getting better by the pitch. Gracious. I mean, I'm such a fan girl. <laughs> She's so good. And to be able to do it that consistently, look at those numbers from her freshman season. Yeah. It was the Pac-12 freshman of the year, burst onto the scene. Everyone was like, oh, who's this girl? And then in her sophomore season, wins player of the year, national player of the year. It's so hard to do. She's one of the most scouted pitchers in the nation and kind of able to reinvent herself, but it's also credit to her talent with, you know, obviously this is her fourth season, but being an Olympian, so you get that exposure as well. People right. have eyeballs on you and everybody knows what she looks like, what she throws, and the fact that she's consistently still so dominant. Bella Dayton is pinch running on first for Scoopin. Scoopin had a tremendous at bat against Garcia in her last go. Down 0 and 2 here, but she got down 0 and 2 and then worked a walk in her last at bat. So Dayton is on first for Scoopin as Arizona is trying to put something together. This is an Arizona team that's won 30 straight here at home, dating back to last season. A UCLA team that has the longest win streak in the Pac-12 at 12 games in a row coming in. And these are both teams that want to host Super Regionals. Well, at this point right now in the game for Arizona, they're trying to push one run. You get a runner aboard, a leadoff runner in the hit by pitch. Coach Candrea goes to his bench and gets Bella Dayton as a pinch runner who has a ton of speed, can just flat fly over the first. Scoopin shoots that foul and in foul territory, the catch is made by Gooden. And she's able to erase the pinch runner as well. That is not what Bella wanted to find herself in. What a play. Kelly Gooden deep, deep down the line in left field. Look at this throw. Mm. I mean, yes, Bella Dayton, you're saying, okay, this game is eight runs, you getting to second base. I don't know if that's the chance we need to take right now, but she has to have a perfect throw to get that out. Nine times out of 10, that, that ball's gonna be a little high, a one hop to your left. That was just a laser. So it's down to Peanut Martinez representing the final out for Arizona as UCLA is in run rule territory. Peanut is 0 for 1. She did reach on a fielder's choice, batting 282 this season. Garcia Chopper to Vines, and that is going to do it as UCLA blanks Arizona eight to nothing. The Bruins now with eight wins in their last nine games here in Tucson, and with their 13th straight win, the magic number to clinch an 11th Pac-12 title is down to just one. I mean, what, what else can you say? UCLA just coming out looking like the number two ranked team in the nation. Five home runs on the night. And they're a team that doesn't really hit the long ball. Yes, they can do it, but they don't need it to win. But my goodness, tonight did it help. Bruins have won seven of the last eight series overall against Arizona coming into this series and now have a critical game one we're going to play four 
three of them count and right now advantage UCLA. What impressed you most about the Bruins? Their home run power. Mm. I mean, I haven't seen them hit the ball like that all season. We seen... see. I thought you were going to say Garcia because she held <laughs> Arizona to just two hits. <laughs> yeah, Arizona only was able to manage four base runners mm. on the night against Rachel Garcia. And Garcia they're... tackling your teammate. Why not? <laughs> A loose bunch. It feels good when you come into a place like Hillenbrand. This is, in my opinion, the hardest place to play in the Pac-12. They get the most fans. They're loud. It's a hard place to play. The ball flies here. And credit UCLA. They came out and took advantage of the thin air down here in Tucson. 